heat module. That's all you need because space is fucking freezing. You you wanna you wanna <laughs> you wanna cool it down real fast? Just open a window. <laughs> And you're dead. Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton. I'm your humble narrator. Welcome to 60... 60 parsecs. I was about to say 60 seconds, but this is a follow-up to the game 60 seconds, which is a game that I did in the infancy of my channel, so I'm very excited to play its sequel. It's bigger, it's better, in my opinion, so we'll go ahead and start up a new adventure. And we got the uh, space drill, basically, you got 60 seconds to throw a bunch of shit into your craft before you uh, launch the escape pod. Voyagers, the full game experience survival is just, you know, space. Space survival with randomly generated supplies. But I want to get my own supplies, so I'm going to go Voyager. And then we've got uh, a variety of different captains. Emmett Ellis, you can see he's got a uh, pretty good intelligence attribute. You got Dee Dee Dawkins. Baby Bronco, he's got a fucking massive strength stat. Um, everybody else is kind of middling, but yeah, you probably want these three, Emmett, Dee Dee, Bronco, and then uh, maybe you pick Tom or Megan, depending if you want uh, a sausage party or a clam jam. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with, hmm, I'm going to go with Baby Bronco, because with that strength stat, he can actually pick up more stuff during the... Uh, the 60 seconds phase. Then again, Dee Dee also has the agility. We're gonna go for agility. We're gonna be fast. I wanna go fast. So here we go. 60 seconds to basically grab as much crew and supplies as I can to keep myself alive. Probably rations are the most important thing. So if you see some soup and you can fit it, then grab it. Grab it, grab it, grab it. Especially if you've got like a ton of crew members. All right, here we go. Do 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 do. Oh, med kit. Need that. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right, what's this thing here? A battery. I want some soup. All right, I see some supplies over there. Should probably grab those. And the sock puppet. And there's a soup. Damn it! I need the soup. All right, those top two rooms seem pretty cleared. As you can see, Dee Dee is fucking really fast. I'm gonna grab Baby Bronco up. You coming with me, Bo? And uh, more soup, supplies, can I fit it? Yeah, I can. All right, we're doing pretty good. Pretty good, not too bad. Emmett, you're coming with me. I can't fit uh, those, those supplies. I could go back and grab Megan. The communicator's also right here. Oh god, we're gonna cut it close. Come on, you. Oh, oh shit, oh shit! I shouldn't have done it. Come on, let's go! Oh, oh, oh! Oh my god! In the last second! <laughs> Holy tits! I don't know how much stuff I got. It seemed like a, a good amount, though. Probably not enough soups. It's never enough soups. Damn it. People just get hungry. They get hungry so quick in space, you know? And you can leave them starving. Um, that was a good strategy in the original. In 60 seconds, you could let people go hungry for a day or two. So let's see. Where are we now? Day one. Well, we got a good amount of soup, actually. Eight of them? That'll be enough to feed everybody twice. <laughs> God damn it. Alright, check the star log. Greetings, ASTRO, computerized assistant reporting for duty. You must be Dee Dee, right? I'm pleased to announce that according to my data, you qualify to become the captain of this vessel. Welcome aboard the escape shuttle, Captain. On behalf of the Astro Citizen Program, please accept our apologies for the slight misfortune of being transported 60 parsecs away from Earth. First order of business, find a safe place to land, and then try to contact the outside world. Please activate the main computer for further instructions. It's located in the center of the shuttle. Follow the regular rationing protocol and feed your crew. The command is yours, Captain. Thank you so much. And, uh, appropriate landing spot is our current goal. Captain's goal makes seven successful attribute decisions of any type. That shouldn't be too hard, to be quite honest. First attribute decision is going to be my highest stat, Agility. Since you've just taken command, the protocol dictates a speech must be given. A good one. Scratch that. A great one! Everyone's really looking forward to your speech, Captain. So am I. 
This is it. Can you really show what breed of captain you will be on this incredible journey? What kind of speech will you give? An agile one. Of course. Of course. Let's see if I succeeded at it, though. You never know. Day two. Never before has anyone given a speech so determined and to the point. Not any space captain, at least. You spoke of making your own luck and surviving. It really sounded like you knew what you were talking about. Did you? That was quite a performance, Captain. Your crew started cheering even before you were finished with the speech. Long live the Captain, filled the cabin. If any sound could travel through the soundless void outside the hull of the ship, that would be it. One thing is for sure, you're ready for any challenge this galaxy throws at you. Captain, the crafting module in the back of the cabin is also now available. It's just like the Astro Citizen material set. This state-of-the-art machine lets you create and destroy in accordance with the principle of mass conservation. All you need is a little bit of minerals, chemicals, or power. Use it to craft, recycle, and repair your supplies, as well as upgrade items and shuttle systems. Emmett and Megan are glad to have me as their captain. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, Bronco? Why you gotta be like that? Why you gotta be like that, dog? And I don't have any of the chemicals, which is arguably the most important supply. But, uh, I guess it's fine. We'll craft up a, uh, an artifact. The shuttle lacks the EM shielding found on larger vessels. Simply put, it was never meant for long-term space travel. There are some inherent risks, namely to your skin. Remember how your mom always told you to wear sunscreen at the beach? You're way more likely to get a sunburn out here, where there's no atmosphere to protect you. Will you please, please put some sunscreen on? No. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Go ahead, burn me. We got a black guy too. He'll probably survive. He got a lot of melanin. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, he could become the captain. That's not how it works. If the captain dies, everything's over. You did not wear sunscreen to block the harsh electromagnetic rays flying wantonly through the vacuum of space. You claim that sunscreen makes you break out. I can't verify if this is true or false, seeing as I'm an AI and I've never experienced a pimple. Your skin is radiating heat, you're complaining of fatigue, and you've got the telltale crimson glow that's the trademark of a developing sunburn. Too late now. You just have to wait and hope we exit this bad patch of radiation soon. Aloe vera could help. If we had any. Enjoy being a lobster! <laughs> I shall. Dee Dee's caffeinated, so I, I... Yeah, it doesn't seem like anybody has a status. I just don't want to waste my first aid kit, goddammit. Captain, I'm detecting a troubling buildup of mental tension. Recommended course of action? Throw an epic party. I took the liberty of inviting myself. Invite the entire crew? But of course, the more the merrier, I guess. How about we invite someone new, eh, Captain? Someone you don't know. Or we make ourselves a new companion. Yes. How do we do it? Uh, I guess Mr. Sock Puppet can, can be our new companion at the party. That would be fun. Can I also craft anything? I guess not. I can upgrade some stuff, though. Let us do that. Upgrade the crafting module system. Oh. That's going to take all of my power. Yeah, fuck it. It's all good. We're gonna do just fine. Huzzah! Huzzah, huzzah! What are we on, day four? Nobody's eaten anything yet. Probably all hungry now. That was one super party, Captain. I love how you put a sock on your hand yesterday and pretended it's a person. A mysterious Mary Jane, apparently. You've had quite a lively debate, a lively debate with it, too. Well, desperation breeds unexpected, unexpected chatmates, doesn't it? I found it a little weird when you started arguing with the socks and eventually tore it apart. You've got quite a temper, Captain. The important part is, you blew off some steam. And also my sock is fucking broken. Damn. Well, damn. Oxygen level's dropping. We have a malfunctioning filter in the main onboard s support circuit for oxygen waste. Moscow, for short. I don't know who named it, but we can't rule out sabotage. Those damn dirty reds named it. <laughs> We're still fighting with the Russians in this universe. Uh, you should fix it. You can reach Moscow from the zero-g space between the hull and the outer deck. Well, uh, I think Emmett has the biggest brain, so we're gonna send him to fix it. It's not because he's black, okay? Let's not... Let's just put that off the table right away, okay? Everything's gonna be fine. He's not gonna be the first one to die or nothing. I'm gonna make sure of it. I got his back, okay? As Emmett descended below deck, he noticed an obscene hand drawing of an American and a Soviet. Emmett blushed furiously, then tripped into a mass of wires like a fork diving into a spaghetti plate. Still tangled, he forgot to pause the airflow before removing the filter. When carbon dioxide hit, car carbon dioxide hit, 
carbon dioxide hit him. Emmett made a face not unlike the Soviet in that drawing. Many brain cells must have died in that very moment. The sacrifice was not in vain, though. We now have a fully functional air filter. Emmett is still loyal, but I think he uh, lost some, some brain cells, so that's not good. The ladies are hungry, so actually, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make them wait for a day. Everybody can eat together, okay? Nothing to report, Captain. I suggest you... Captain, would you mind covering your mouth when you yawn? I thought you got a good night's sleep. Wait, could this be boredom? Yes, I've heard that you humans need excitement in their lives to function properly. How curious. Captain, you're sitting in a state-of-the-art space shuttle drifting through the deep cosmos full of wonder and mystery. Can you at least pretend you're having a good time? No! I'm just a human. I'm just a simple hairless monkey, okay? I get bored with stuff. Sometimes. Sometimes. That's alright. I do find it quite mysterious. Quite wondrous. Yesterday stayed pretty slow and boring and it stayed that way. Started slow and boring and stayed that way. I'm not programmed for your entertainment, Captain, so don't count on me to keep you occupied. If they wanted to have a fun, fun in the shuttle, they would have installed the C-L-O-W-N computerized assistant instead. Alright, everybody's hungry now, so we're going to break out those rations. Ration soup to all. Enjoy. Captain, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is that using the airlock as a space toilet was a success. It's now packed full and ready to be emptied into space. The bad news is that the airlock hatch is jammed. If you don't fix it, our clogged toilet will quickly become an extinction-level event. It's now or never, Captain. How will you save the human race? With duct tape! Yes, I'll tape this poop. <laughs> or something. I don't know how I'm going to use it to, to fix it, but... You gotta be innovative. You know, you gotta be smart to be a, a space monkey. The duct tape saved the day, Captain! The airlock hatch is now fully operational and the troublesome cargo is gone. We're safe. I'm certain the smell will go away too. Someday. <laughs> the people are safe, Captain. What a relief for all of you. Nobody's hungry anymore. We're doing good. Attention, Captain. I'm detecting a leak in our reactor coolant system. In case you're wondering, this is not good. Did I mention that you should not inhale anything that comes out of the reactor? Please don't. Also, how are you going to fix it? Well, I don't have a mask, so I guess, I guess I'm not going to fix it. I guess we'll just breathe in reactor coolant. Delicious reactor coolant. Mmm. The best. Teamwork goes so much better when a group of humans is faced with the possibility of a radioactive death. With all the chaos and cries for help, I can't tell which one of you managed to fix the leak in the end. Too bad you inhaled quite a bit of coolant in the process. Yeah, well, we're all fucking brain dead at this point. <laughs> Captain, our wondrous Astro Citizen mini reactor needs its regular coolant flush. Wasn't it just leaking everywhere? Didn't that flush the coolant? Alright, never mind. The magnificent machine occupies two thirds of the shuttle storage and weighs less than a 20 ton truck. Truly a marvel of space age miniaturization. <laughs> Keeping it in good condition is crucial yet difficult. To flush the coolant pipes, you must spin the torque shaft at precisely 98 beats per minute for 17 minutes. Emmett is idle. Do you want to ask him to begin the flushing process? Uh, I mean, I guess. I guess so. Let's see if his brain is still working. Who knows? Quite a mystery, yes! Still haven't found a spot to land. Damn it. Emmett gladly obliged when you asked to flush the mini-reactor's coolant pipes. He went the extra mile, optimizing the coolant flow. Emmett spotted a crack in one of the mini-reactor pipes and managed to rectify the situation. Close call, Captain. The ladies are hungry again. You wait for the boys, I'm telling you. Your attention is required, Captain. This is most abnormal. We are registering unknown transmissions and I cannot identify who is sending them, and more importantly, what they contain. There might be a solar flare interference, or worse, a new type of Soviet encryption! We need to decipher these signals as soon as possible. For all we know, our survival depends on it. Who do you want to put in charge of monitoring these communications? I'm sorry to make you do everything, Emmett. It's not... It's not the way it seems. You just, you know, got the biggest brain, and I'm super proud of you. Oh, let's craft a maskie. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. I would like a maskie, just in case the reactor starts fucking killing us again. I mean, it didn't really have any effect, but... Some events you, like, don't think it's going to have any effect and you end up just fucking dying completely. First contact! Hey! 
Captain, you need to see this. I'm not easily excited, but this is one of the greatest moments for humanity and human-made AI alike. We're not alone in this universe. The signals we intercepted were finally decrypted. They're alien transmissions, as in coming from other life forms. And no, I don't mean the Reds. It's something we've never seen before. There seem to be a number of intelligent civilizations in this galaxy. The signals are coming from everywhere. We can safely assume we're going to meet some of them sooner or later. Our, or rather, your life will never be the same, Captain. Uh, Captain is hungry, Megan is hungry, Baby is hungry, Emmett is hungry. Okay. Rations for everybody. These are our last rations, so try and fucking make it count. I'm gonna craft up this, uh, armor with the last bit of our, our, our resources. We really need to land somewhere soon. Can you hear my teeth chattering, Captain? Of course you can, because I'm a computer and I have no teeth. Duh. Still, I regret to inform you that the heat module's stuck in a cooling feedback loop. It's gonna get very cold very soon. My vacuum tubes will be fine, but you should protect yourself or you'll freeze, Captain. Well, I got the lighter. Why do we have a cooling feedback loop? What is that? The heat module. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Heat module. That's all you need because space is fucking freezing. You, you wanna, you wanna, <laughs> you wanna cool it down real fast? Just open a window. <laughs> <laughs> and you're dead. And you're dead! The heat module has reset to factory defaults and is running on its tropical setting, Captain. Suggestion, why don't we make the lighter a heat module backup system? It worked today. It will again. Hooray! Everybody's okay soup-wise. Space travel can be dull, but there's still tons of ways to make your own fun. Trust me. I'm, I live in a computer. Let's design a game. Your game will need a core mechanic. What could you... Which could revolve around an item. Get creative. What kind of game will you design? A game with fire! Welcome to the Thunderdome, bitch! Yeah! Alrighty, day 12. We're doing okay, I guess. Aside from the whole no food having thing. <laughs> you design your game around the lighter. The core mechanic of the game was chase the crew around the shuttle. If the person you were chasing got burned, they owed you 10 push-ups. <laughs> You played until you realized how much the fire made you miss Earth. At least you could camp there. Remember camping? Maybe? You guys remember camping? You remember how the Battle of Hog in the town towns? <laughs> you and your crew sat next to the lighter thinking about roasting marshmallows. Aw, Megan considers me her friends. The ladies! The ladies! Baby Bronco just doesn't want to be my friend. He's so standoffish, bro. Oh no, I've been hacked. The virus came in... A transmission from that small asteroid is taking over flight control and steering. Help, Captain! Get it out of me! I've got the brain power to do this. Stand back, everyone. I got this shit. I got this shit. Watch me go. Watch me go. You plugged an emergency console into the disk and quarantined the virus. I'm healthy and whole again. Thank you, Captain. We checked the asteroid from which the virus originated. It was actually an alien supply warehouse. Fortunately for us, soup is universal. Hooray! And there's a planet. Ooh. Captain, wake up. We're approaching some sort of celestial body. It resembles a moon, but I think it's a small planet. Let me run a quick scan. Do -do -do -do. Scanning complete. I was right. A small rocky planet with no organic life forms. But there's a lot of movement down there. Strange. My scanners detect some structures as well. Buildings or even cities. Uh, Captain, if you want to land on this small planet safely, you'll have to fix up a small malfunction with our steering system, since you're not even able to turn at the moment. Oh, and you have to do it before we float away from the planet. Hurry! Do I want to land on a planet with no organic life? I mean, I guess we'll be the new organic life. We got two, two penises and two vaginas, so we could repopulate the planet. Actually, this lady probably, her uterus is all shriveled up and gross. She's got a, a, a raisin for a uterus. <laughs> Ah, so we've got one uterus. <laughs> Still it's good. Still it's enough. We'll have some inbred children. Alright, here we are. Landed. In only two weeks, we found a new fucking planet. Ooh, looks like Captain got banged up. The concept was fine. You dove under the console with a lighter trying to illuminate the dark nest of twisted wires. Once you flipped open the lighter, it turned into pandemonium, which involved burning your own hands, cursing loudly, hitting your head on the desk while attempting to stand up, and falling on top of the control panel and pressing random buttons. With your butt. <laughs> it was not a soft landing. 
Nobody's great doing great after this stunt. Not even me. I'm shaking to my cores. Yes, all of them. Your face had a pretty unpleasant close encounter with our communicator module, and at least one of these things is useless now. Consider fixing it if you want to avoid radio silence in the future. What's next, Captain? Maybe you could use the information I found while scanning the environment. There are robotic units not far from here, but my scan detects very few aggressive signatures. I think these are peaceful automatons. Most of them. Perhaps they can be of help to you. And in case you perish, at least I'll have company. So, it's a win-win. <laughs> Captain, the expedition module in the back of the cabin is now available. All you need to do is stuff someone into the spacesuit and send them outside. We should explore our surroundings carefully. Who knows what dangers wait outside. Let space colonization commence! Huzzah! Alright, everybody's weak. It looks like we all got hurt. Just a little bit. Oh, only the women got hurt. I'm gonna make a crew full of men next time. <laughs> this is this is pathetic. Anyways, we'll shove somebody in the spacesuit. We'll get back into it quite shortly. Thank you for joining me, friends. I'm uh, excited to be on a robot planet, and hopefully we'll be able to find some food since robots don't eat and stuff like that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. This has been 60 Parsecs. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. Please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the episode. Check out the links in the description. Twitter, Discord, Patreon, usually where you can find me. Uh, I'd like to give a huge shout out to my current Patreon supporters. Uh, Nico the Legend and MMX Akira. Them boys, my fucking heroes. Anyways, friends, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you once again for watching. And until then, friends, bye bye. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.